In the previous episode, we built this really simple but quite impressive audio amplifier that's based on the Fender Champ Amp design. And I was really quite happy with how it came out. Uh, and it worked at 24 volts, but we found that by uh, doubling up the negative 12 volt supply and the 24 volt supply to give us essentially 36 volts, we got quite a bit more volume out of it. And I personally think the audio quality improved a bit too. So while we can continue doing this at 24 volts, we, well, we can see that at P equal VI, our, our formula from before, more voltage gives us more power, which is going to give us a better sound and, and more sound overall. So keeping that in mind, I started thinking about ways that we could move forward from here. And I really like the idea of running slightly more voltage, you know, 24 volts to 36 volts was great. But 36 volts is kind of a weird voltage uh, for a couple of reasons, but chief among which is, well, how are we going to power the heaters in the vacuum tubes? In the previous episode, we used that negative 12 volt supply to power the heaters, but uh, I really want to build this out of just one single supply, and 36 volts is weird. That's three 12 volt heaters or, or six, uh, uh, six volt heaters, which gets a little strange. So if we bump up one extra level to 48 volt, that's still a really safe voltage. You can stick your fingers in the circuit and you're, you're not going to get a shock. You probably won't even feel anything. But that's going to give us a little, a little more volume, a little better audio quality, and 48 volts means that we can run four 12 volt tube heaters in series. And since our current design uses two tubes, that means we can just double our design up. So essentially we just have the same amplifier, only copy it over to the other side. There we go. We've got uh, four vacuum tubes, two amplifiers, two speakers, hopefully a lot more sound. And I, I think that would be a really awesome and fun thing to build. Now there's a couple problems with doing this, and that is the chief among which is balancing the heaters. So through my personal testing, the 12B4A that we're using as the driver tube puts out the absolute best sound quality that I've come across for uh, the, the driver tube. I tried a bunch of different tubes and the 12B4A was the best. And so that's our must keep tube. And it has a 12.6 volt heater that draws 300 milliamps. And so we need to match up the current draw of the other tube. And it just so happens that the uh, 12BH7 also is a 12.6 volt 300 milliamp heater. So that's the reason that we ran the BH7 and the B4A. And we're going to continue to run those, so, but we just need, you know, double of them. The other issue is, is that it would be really easy to turn this into a a stereo amplifier. You know, we have a left and a right coming in, and we can split that from, you know, right into one amplifier, left into the other amplifier. Uh, but I really don't want to run two volume <laughs> potentiometers, and I don't have one of those really nifty audio potentiometers that essentially has one knob that does two wipers. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not really super concerned about getting a stereo sound out of it because I want to build this entire thing on one circuit board that's 150 mils by 100 mil, which is, is really, really tiny. So even a, a stereo amplifier out of that, you wouldn't really be able to tell because the speakers I also want to build into the circuit board, those tiny little cute speakers that we had in, in the previous episode. So we're going to uh, take our left and right and run them through some thousand ohm resistors and just make it mono. And then we're going to split that mono signal into the, the two separate amplifiers. And this may seem a little weird, but uh, it comes out to be a little more compact. And I really like the way the design came, came out. So uh, that's, I, I think, what we're going to work with today. Um, so I've already been designing it a little bit on the computers. And I've got that footage recorded, so I want to take you guys along with me on the journey of designing it on the computer and then uh, hopping out into the garage and cutting the circuit board and building it and then uh, finally bringing it in and testing it. So uh, let's head out to the garage and get started. The program that I'm using to design the circuit board here is called DesignSpark PCB. There's a lot of different uh, EDA programs out there, but this is the one that I found was the most intuitive to use. And uh, I've been using it for a while and I, I really quite enjoy it. 
Now you'll notice that the electrical traces that I'm mapping out here, which are in blue, are, are quite fat, and they're actually about one millimeter thick. And that's because the old school Bridgeport mill that I'm using to mill the PCB with isn't quite as precise as a modern actual PCB router. And so I use this fat trace width to give the mill a little bit of leeway and, and precision there. And these actually seem to work really well for all the PCBs I make. Now all the PCBs I make are single-sided. I haven't uh, gone to too much effort to try and figure out how to do a dual-sided PCB. I'm, I'm quite happy with the single-sided ones. And anytime you see a little yellow line connecting to through holes, that's a uh, jumper that's going to go on the top of the board. Now after the PCB has been designed, I export it to a free program called FlatCam, and that changes the Gerber files from DesignSpark into uh, G-code files that our mill can read. And then all that's left is the actual legwork of designing the entire thing.
Well, and here is the finished product. And right off the bat, I am in love with the way this thing looks. I just think the aesthetic of it came out perfect. Machining the pocket out of this single block of wood just looks amazing. There's no seams on it. Now granted, the wood is a little beat up. There's tons of scars on the top of it. There's a big gouge on the front of it here, but I think that kind of adds to the character of it. And I could have sanded that back completely smooth, but uh, well, uh, partially I was impatient. I really wanted to see how it would look, but also I think that adds a little bit of panache to it. I really like it. So I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I couldn't be happier with the appearance of it. But this is an audio amplifier with speakers. So how does it sound? I think it sounds amazing. The speakers are really small, so I, obviously there's not a whole lot of bass, uh, but the, the wooden box here creates a nice kind of cavity for the speakers to resonate in. And so it sounds really, really good. And by bumping up to 48 volts, all of that kind of clipping and noise that we were getting, even at 36 volts, is just gone. It's just crisp, clean sound. Ah, it's just such an amazing sound coming out of it. Now, it's not very loud. I mean, it's, it's plenty loud for a quiet room, but if there's a bunch of stuff going on in the room, it's, it's not gonna overpower that. And actually, I would say that this is a pretty decent level for, say, an apartment. And I mean, obviously we weren't expecting huge uh, volume out of this with the tiny output transformers and just 48 volts, but it puts out a decent amount of noise. As a matter of fact, I, I was playing with it earlier and uh, uh, my wife had to hold her hands over her earphones so she could listen to the TV show that she was watching. So it was loud enough to intrude over her earphones, which I thought was was a good indication of the level of noise that's coming out. And I actually did a little bit of testing with one of those uh, really cheap decibel meters uh, applications that's for your phone. And uh, with my laptop speakers at full volume, it was averaging about 80 decibels. Uh, and with this at full volume, it was averaging about 70 decibels. So it's a little quieter than a laptop at full volume. But honestly, I think it sounds better than the sound that comes out of my laptop speakers. So let's, let's turn it back up a little bit and take another listen. This was just an absolutely fantastic project. I'm so glad that I did it. Uh, I can see why the world of hi-fi vacuum tube audio amplifiers is such an addicting world to get into. It's totally wild to think that the absolutely minuscule audio signal that's coming in through the jack here is being amplified by these vacuum tubes and driven through some random cheapo speakers that I found. And it sounds this good. I could not be happier with how this turned out. It is so, so cool. And it's, it's a relatively easy project to undertake. So if anybody's looking to get into audio amplifiers, vacuum tube audio amplifiers, this is a wonderful way to break into it. This was so much fun to make. I am so happy with how the whole project came out and the sound that comes out of it is just amazing. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I inspired y'all to maybe get into the world of uh, audio amplifiers with vacuum tubes, but uh, this was just a massive amount of fun for me. And so uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.